o'clock, so why don't we get started? We have Debbie Greenblatt with us here, and I'm sure we're going to get some more folks joining us. And we are continuing our uh, two-part series on busking. For those of you who want to learn more about public performance, we're going to be doing some play-alongs with the busking fiddle tunes for two violins. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Debbie. Thank you. Thanks, Mary Pat. Glad to be here. There's tons of tunes in this book. I mean, we could go anywhere, uh, ethnic tunes and Irish tunes and tunes for holidays, that kind of thing. Uh, but I think I, I should pick the first one, but I hope the rest of you will help me pick which ones to do because they're all really cool. Uh, ah, where to begin? I know. Um, I thought I knew. Uh, oh, yeah, here we go, here we go. Page 58, Supin. Okay, Dave. Should I be able to do this? Sure. Okay. There it is. Yeah. Supin. This is a Scandinavian tune. Uh, page 58. And it can go really, really fast. So it just depends. Uh, but generally, you want to have a lively tune like this to play because it's just really fun. And it's really sort of a hoedown-ish mood, but it's in 3-4. And this will come in handy you know, if, any, if you're in a Scandinavian festival or something. It's uh, from Sweden, and uh, let's just take it a moderate tempo. Let's do it all the way through with the repeats. And then when you can ask silly questions and I will make up an answer. One and two and three and one and two and three. That's a nice moderate tempo, but boy, when you play it fast, it's really cool. Uh, and it, it just depends. Uh, a lot of these tunes you could use for many different tempos, and it'll be just fine. Uh, this one, I think, just wants to just go. So I'm thinking one, two, three, one, two, 
three. Are you feeling brave? One, two, three, one, two, go. that makes it about this tune is uh, you're going from a an, and then all of a sudden it's a D minor, you know, but then when you get to the end of that section, then it's then unexpectedly back to D major. It's just so cool. And I like the roly-poly business. You know, you can do the slurs I've indicated or change them. It doesn't really matter. Or, or you could even uh, slur them over the bar line. That's one of my favorite things to do. It's the way I do it on Nickel Harper. Anyway, it's very fun. Any questions? Someone said something in the chat. I wonder if it was my husband. Uh, no, it was me. Just in case people <laughs> hadn't um, gone to the link and downloaded the book, I wanted to make sure they had it. So. You know, sometime before the Zoom session is open over, you can download the book. Um, or if you forget to do it, then uh, send me an email and we'll make sure you get a link to the book. Uh, it's so great to be working with you, Mary Pat. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie and I have known each other a long time. We're having way too much fun. with We hardly saw each other and then COVID happened and we both figured out Zoom and now we're just inseparable. I don't know if yes. this is a good thing or not. <laughs> <clears throat> no, this, I think this it's is a great fairly thing. mild. Um, yeah, really I is have true. I have met I'm, with the Zoom workshops and people signing in from all over the planet. I have met some very interesting people. I bet you have. <laughs> so whatever trouble you and I will be generating, this is just a small portion of the potential that I see every week. There, I bet. I bet. <laughs> Anyone have any ideas for the next tune that we should do? Well, let's see, which one did I want to do before that I kept forgetting? Uh, no, that's too political. Uh, oh, page nine, Bode Valsen. Because eventually, uh, People will be excited by what you do, you know, the nice, upbeat, fun tunes, but they'll be like a quiet thing, like those tired parents that will come by and you'll realize they've just gotten the baby to sleep. So the last thing you want to do is wake this kid up because the parents will go crazy. Boda, it's up there somewhere. Yeah, the sharing is a little tricky, Mary Pat. Anyway, yes, yeah, so it's on the right hand side of the screen. And I've seen it in various keys. Somebody asked something? Okay, 
I guess not. Okay. No, we just and, had someone joining in. I just muted. Them. Oh, good, good. Welcome. So, Bodavalsen, it's a little on the sad side. Starts out in E minor and it's really kind of moody. And, you know, you say you don't want to do it too slow or it's like a dirge. But then all of a sudden there's another key change and in the middle it's a C major. And then it just winds right back down to the E minor. It's lovely. So, we can just do this up to tempo because it just should be a nice, moderate. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, go. It's just luscious. Uh, lots of good opportunities for double stops if you're feeling brave. Uh, uh, let's see where I like. Um, yeah, when you get to that first C major chord in measure one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I like using a C on the A string below the G and keeping it there while I'm playing the F sharp on the E string. And then I use a first finger for the F sharp and the B below it. And that makes, makes it easier for the guitar player to have a chance of figuring out where you are headed. Otherwise, he would, uh, the guitar player might use more norm expected chords. But here it's just so gorgeous. no doubt and then right away a C under the E for a nice rich C chord. Nah, no, never mind that wasn't a great idea. I had good intentions. You just have to experiment and hopefully you'll end up with something that you like and then if it works then you should do it because it'll work. Yeah it's another Swedish one. Okay who else has a tune? A thought? Mary Pat? Anybody? Yeah, I was uh, really curious uh, about Dallas Bound. I had never heard that tune, and I would like to get it in my head. It looked fun. It's really fun. Oh, I was hoping we could do that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, we have found that the chord progression for Dallas Bound is the same as the chord progression for Fishing blues. I'm a going fishing. You're a going fishing. Da, 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 da. And so when Dave and I do that together, I use Dallas Bound for my improvisatory break in between. People think I'm brilliant. Okay, Dallas Bound. 
So definitely swing. And you want to do it slow enough so that you can swing the 16s. Uh, the danger, uh, particularly if you're going to use this in a contest, the danger is a lot of contestants might want to just play it too fast because, you know, fast is better. Ha, ha, ha. So, yeah, so I think a moderate tempo, guys, you can read this. Uh, one and a two and a one and a two and a one and a two and a one and go. Lots of syncopation. you should slide into that last chord. It's very effective. And you could do it faster, you know, there's nothing really wrong with it. Yeah, yeah, it's too fast. Moderate tempo, like a ganglot, like a walking tune. Uh, I do have some fun ideas. Anybody interested in a couple of double stop hints? Um, Not there. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. Measure five, six. Measure seven. Use the open A and the E at the same time. Then a fourth finger on the A string, so you get two E's. Better than one. Okay. Then when I get to measure ten, I really like stealing the seventh from a seventh chord as a, a clue as to what note to try to add into a texture, because that's really the driving force between one chord and another. It's like when you're driving and you put on your blinker, people will be expecting you to go somewhere. So that's what the seventh chord does. So I like doing it there. Let's see, I'll start measure nine. Okay, so. That was the seventh. I could have just added a G, but it's a whole other emotional state. I don't know quite what emotional state it is, but it's not Kansas. Or it's just a little jazzier when you add the seventh to these things. So that's what I like to do. And then what do I do? I did something I thought was interesting. Um, okay, yeah, uh, measure 29. There we have a, uh, for a while, and then a, at the end of it, but it's a G7 chord on that last eighth note. So, but I don't want to change the rhythm necessarily. So, while I'm hanging on to the B and the D, I'm going to take my, 
left elbow, well, it's the one over here, and move it slightly to the right so that the nail of my index finger is now on the first finger on the D string. And then I put my two, so it's a, a one and an open, a one and a one, and a one and a two. When you put it all together, it's and it just sounds real smooth if I do say so myself. And again, it alerts whoever you're playing with that a, a change of chord is definitely coming. You're not just going to sit on it. So that's the deal with that tune, a nice ragtime tune, good style to have. You need to have things from various cultures and time periods and everything. So, any uh, tune requests? I keep gravitating to the Scandinavian. Okay, okay, here's a... So you're somewhere and someone's from Kansas and you need to be able to play Home on the Range because it's the state song for Kansas and it's a good song. So many states have just tunes that aren't as good as this one is for Kansas. So let's go to page 28 and do Home on the Range. It may sound silly. I mean, this is certainly not going to be, you know, something that's too difficult for you guys to play. But sometimes the simplest tunes are, are just wonderful for folks. And they can sing along. Uh, and so if, if you're playing it in this key, in the key of G, and, and they're starting to sing along and they sing really, really bad, you could always just stop and walk away, but then I think the other thing to do would be the second time through the tune, play an octave higher and maybe they'll get it. So nice flowing walls. And if you can play it and sing it at the same time, that would be cool. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, go. <laughs> There's probably tons of those kinds of tunes that are in your memory that you would not have thought of like deliberately buying the sheet music for, but you can do it. Like Happy Birthday. Uh, raise your hand if you have a good version of Happy Birthday. Oh, you need this. You need this. So, yeah. Uh, I think the safest thing is to just start an open D. And then you go back to the beginning, it's the same thing. Then it's this octave skip that just stumps people for some reason, you know. Make sure to do the slide there. And the other thing is maybe get a version of it in a minor key for it, because sometimes people, when they turn 40, they think that's a big deal. <laughs> children. So sometimes they might want it in a minor key. I'm just making it really dramatic and silly and stupid. Okay, so... Uh, Tune requests. Oh, Finn John, page 20. 
And some of these tunes will have little tricks to them, things that when you know what you're doing and, and then you play them and then you realize other people are catching on. This is an Israeli tune and the spots where I have um, these things, when it is a sung song, uh, those are where the claps are. So it's this one takes longer than you have to wait till now that kind of thing so it's a great tune dave and i once played this at a very fancy restaurant and it was so interesting because it was you know white tablecloths and very fancy and uh, and we played this tune and we got to that part in the tune and there were at least two or three tables that stopped eating and started clapping it was a bonding experience so let's try it moderate tempo and do the left hand pits traditionally done with the little finger and if you can do it with the little finger while the rest of your fingers are waving up in the air and then your audience will wonder, oh my God, how is she doing that? You don't have to tell them. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, go. Now let's do it a little faster, that's too slow. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Also, when you're doing the pizzas, uh, when you're doing the pizzas, lift your bow way up in the air, and this will be another a point at which your audience will wonder, my gosh, how is she doing that? It's just a little visual, or you could use it as a method of pointing out a particular person in the audience, so you might want to go, you know, just pointing at them. That kind of thing. It can be fun. It engages the audience as long as they don't. So have, raise, raise your hand if you've read the uh, introduction to this collection. Or did you just go right to the notes? You probably just went right to the notes. Yeah, the brief guide to busking. Yeah, it's at the end, actually. And I just wanted to say the quote for you so that I can see your faces when you hear it. It turns out that George Burns used to busk. It's true. Okay, so this quote is from George. What a guy. Sometimes the customers threw something in the hats. Sometimes they took something out of the hats. Sometimes they took the hats. <laughs> so
So it can be a little precarious out there. You need to use some common sense. Okay, let's go to uh, the Road to Lisden Varna and Boys from Tandragi. Uh, I, it was a scary putting these two together in a medley because I tend to get the two of them confused anyway. Uh, let's see. Okay, that should be, yep, that's it. Again, a great E minor key and uh, very Irish. Uh, the little the little stuff up on the top, this was from a collection uh, called Barn Dance Fiddle Tunes. And so for each barn dance tune, I uh, constructed a workable kickoff. So for this one, it would be just to give folks an idea of tempo and key. So if it's ideally, it would be one, two, one, two. <laughs> Would have tuned beforehand. No, actually, it's so that definitely establishes a six-eight feel. It establishes an E minor once you have a fiddle player who actually knows what those notes are. Makes it a little easier. So let's do that, and let's do a kind of you know slowish. Uh, again, with with jigs, I always suggest to my students. If it's a jig that's really worth doing, it's worth starting out as a waltz and just do it really slowly. Get to know it. And then you can find the speed that's right for the both of you. It's a partnership. Okay, so. And some of you might recognize a Road to Liszt and Varna as the theme song for, oh, what's that show? Thistle and Shamrock. One, two, ready, go. After that, you could just go right back to the beginning. Second iron. Just go right back to the top again and just do it, do it, do it. Great tunes. Uh, I wouldn't go a whole lot faster than this. It loses the character. Nah, not worth it. Uh, no, no, no. Moderate, moderate jiggy tempo for this one, I think. Anyway, another thing you guys will look forward to when you do start busking, if you haven't already, are all those little accidental things that happen. Like there was one time there was a tired parent, a baby in a stroller, and the, you knew the parents just wanted to get the kid in the car and drive around and get the kid to sleep. But the kid was really interested in what we were doing. And, uh, and uh, David's got his mic off or something. Anyway, uh, and so they were trying to drive him uh, by us, but his head kept looking back as he was going forward. It was just, he, he got it. It was great. It was great. Okay. Okay. So you need to be prepared for everything. Let's say someone comes up to you and they say, oh, do you know any Hungarian tunes? What would you do? 
And if you don't have any Hungarian tunes, you need to find tunes from countries that are right around there. So you need to, you know, brush up your geography. Uh, this one is on page 38. I cannot pronounce the Hungarian title, but the translation is, the mill does not have a stone. Not that I know anything about that, but if it doesn't have a stone, I don't think it can function as a mill. I think it needs a stone. I don't know. Anyway, must be a euphemism for something. I hope it's clean. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go back to the contents and find this tune. Or did he put it in the English? Oh, boy. Is it in the English? No, it's not in here. Or did he put it under the letter M? You know, we have these, yes, he did, okay. You have it on page 38. Yes, I found it now. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, this is, this is so cool. This is a great little tune. Uh, we don't need to take it slow, do we? How about, uh, one, two, one, two. It's a nice dance tempo of getting into too much trouble. One, one, two, one, two. Ready, go. <laughs> enough for you? little change of pace? Uh, let's do it again. You need to get more familiar and then you'll probably have questions. One, two, one, two, one. Oh yeah, those double ups. I thought it was a good idea at the time, but if you don't feel like doing the double ups, don't do the double ups. One, two, one, go. <laughs> having trouble getting that high C natural. Anyone need a fingering for that? Well, I'm gonna give you one. Okay, so here's what I do there. I find so often, if it's just you know one note higher uh, like that, you really don't need to go into third position and yet a lot of people will automatically do that. But what I'm suggesting is, uh, I'm starting at 15. I've got a one there. Instead of the three, I'm gonna I'm gonna sneak up to second position and use the the for the A I'm gonna use a two. Then it becomes two, three, four, three, two, two, two. So it's three, one, two, three, four, three. Second position comes to the rescue. It's great. Fun little tune. Any questions or, oh yeah. La Paloma, page 46. So did he put that under P? Yes, he did, okay, good. Cause it's sort of Spanishy. And I can't even pronounce the name of the composer, but definitely Latin, Spanish. Now here's a trick. If you wanted to be really classy, I don't, which I, I will attempt classy. you can pull it off and you should definitely try and that might not be my key 
but but it's it's possible with a very simple backup like that. That's as far as I dare try it. But you should look for those opportunities because it's great visually. It's, it'll just add a little bit of zest to what you're doing when you're busking. But let's try the top part uh, and maybe sing the harmony part. That would be the way to go. <laughs> one. Nice slow too. So we one, or, boom, da 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 da. One, two, one and two. <laughs> so laid back and lush. Uh, I really like the, the, the tunes that change from threes to twos, where it's one, two, one, two, three. And it, play, it happens uh, between the melody and the accompaniment, where the, the melody is definitely two, one, two. But then the backup is like that first measure, one, two, three, the, fir the fourth measure. You've got on the top a triplet on beat one, but in the accompanying part it's a dotted eighth and a sixteenth. So you have to have some sense of two against three. And that's one thing my violin teacher at college did for me, man. He taught me the trick of being able to count two against three. So you need to do this. Um, it's, yeah, it's. I'm gonna turn the, kill me for doing this. Okay, so good, so you can, no, you can't see my fingers. Okay, anyway, it's, it sounds like this. So it's both hands on beat one, then right, left, right, left, right, both, Right, left, right, left, right. 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 Isn't that fun? Do you feel powerful now? Okay, so the way to remember that is, and he told me this when I was a college student, so I was over 18, he said, it's past the goddamn butter. Okay, so he had me do that, and then he had me switch hands. Anyway, it's fun. 
So be on the lookout for that because when you do this along with some basic hoedowns and waltzes and polkas, then you're giving uh, whoever is hanging around on the corner a balanced diet of interesting stuff. You know, and that's what I aimed to do when I put the book together. Because you just never know. Let's see. No, that's too weird. Oh, oh, yeah. Page 10, Chorus Jig. I love this tune. And I got it off of an album. And it just ran really fast, and I had a hard time grasping it initially. So I would listen to the recording, and then I would just try to play little bird sounds out of it. So I was listening to it as a fast tempo. For example, it'll be worth it to you. You will love this tune. had to learn it was just picking out little things that were bird calls so it would be so for each section I would pick out a thing that would feel like a bird call etc 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 so that worked pretty well. So let's take this slower. Should we do it slower? Okay, well, let's do it slower. One, two, one, two, one, two. Use your feet. One, two, one, two. Leave notes out if you have to. Makes you want to move. It's great. Okay, we've got time for another couple tunes, uh, or if anyone has any questions. I had a question about the tune you just played. Uh, where is that one from? I noticed that you have it under wedding fiddling tunes. Yeah, because of the mood of the tune. Uh, the tune itself, I got it off an album of uh, New England contra dance tunes. Okay. Thank you. Oh, 
just, it's just great, you know, but uh, yeah, I, I love learning stuff by ear. It's, and a tune like that, it took me a while. <laughs> So I just wrote it down just to save you folks the stress. Let's see, we did Irish, we did Hungarian. Uh, okay, here's a cute little klezmer tune. I had a little overcoat. Page 30, I will find it on the screen because I know how to do this now. And it's actually a recycling song. So too, if you're doing it, it chances are vocals will not be that fabulous for busking unless you have several people with you to just create the sound. But this one is a fun one. I had a little overcoat as old as can be. Fa la 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 la. What was I to do with it? I just couldn't see. Tra la 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 la. <coughs> so I thought a little while and made myself a jacket in the very latest style. Tra la 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 la. Made myself a jacket in the very latest style. And the whole song goes and goes and goes and goes. And then you make something out of a jacket and then maybe a vest. And then you make something out of the vest. And then you keep going until you get to the last verse and there's nothing left. And so the last verse goes, uh, I should probably chord it at the same. I have a little nothing, it was old as can be. La 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 What was I to do with it? I just couldn't see. Tra la 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 So I thought a little while and made myself a song in the very latest style. Tra la 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 tra la 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 Made myself a song in the very latest style. So let's do it. It's only eighth notes, people. You can do this up to tempo. <clears throat> if not, leave notes out. It's okay. One, two, one. Two. Is that too fast? One, two, one, two, one. You'll be fine. <laughs> no one has fainted yet. One, two, one, two, one, two, go. <laughs> It's just a simple little tune. Uh, again, I use second position when I'm having high note stress. Uh, where's the first instance? Well, uh, measure 32. During that open E, I move my hand up just a little bit, and I use a one where the two thought it was going. Open one. One, four, one, four, just because I can. And then back to the open E. Then you're home free. That tends to help a lot. Any questions or tune requests? Pat, any requests? Well, you know me, I love grasshopperness. Oh, yes, I know you do. <laughs> 
So, and I found out in Minnesota, it's more of an accordion tune. You find it on all the accordion CDs. You know, if you go to one of these Scandinavian stores and they have all these local accordion players that have put out their CDs. Yes. So many of them have the grasshopper in on it. But a lot of times these kinds of tunes are good uh, when they're a little longer, like if you're not sure you want to talk to the people who are walking by. Sometimes you just have an instinctive, I should just keep on playing. So you want to have tunes that you can just keep on playing and playing until they go away. On the other hand, it's good to have tunes <clears throat> that have short sections because then if there's someone walking by you really want to talk to, you can just stop at the end of a section and it won't appear as if you're you know, re you know, doing something wrong. You can just stop and it'll make sense and then you get to talk to these people. It's very interesting. The very first person who got me into uh, the local Nebraska fiddling the scene was a fellow who busked in the old market and he had um, um, a wooden leg and a, a chair and he would play and he played really badly but he knew a lot of tunes and he knew where all of the jam sessions were. So he took me to a lot of jam sessions and the only ones he would go to were the ones that had a spittoon. It was, it was a very interesting collaboration. Uh, anyway, when he really wanted to rake in the money, he would unscrew his wooden leg and leave it in his truck and hobble down to the corner. And he did that one day, and I was with him, and it was lovely. It was, you know, on some level. And then he, oh, he said, oh, well, let me take you out for a drink. Okay, so he went back to his truck, screwed on his wooden leg, and took me to a place for a drink for which we had to walk downstairs. And one of the waitresses who waited on us had put coins in his uh, container because she thought he had only one leg, and then there he was at the bottom of the stairway. Yeah, interesting people out there. He was lovely. We, we named our first son after him. <laughs> yeah, that's another story. Grasshopper nuts, it's great. It's a polka one. And, and there are 16s, but they're worth it. Uh, feel free to leave notes out. One, two, one, two, one, two, one. is a great tune. So another thing I would encourage you folks to do, whenever possible, memorize the stuff you're playing. Because that way you can really connect with your audience more, like I'm trying to look at the right thing. So you can connect with your audience more. And uh, then you get that feedback and it's really wonderful. And we always like to think when we're performing that we're like the deal, right? But the real, the real interesting stuff is happening in the audience and you just need to be able to observe it, not so much that you'll get distracted, like the kindergartner in the first row of one of our concerts who had his finger up his nose. 
And I waited, you know, I figured that he's, he's, he's going to pull something out and he'll eat it and then I'll start the next tune. Well, but his finger is still up there. So we played the tune and the whole time we're playing the tune, thank gosh, I thought I knew what I was doing. I was watching the kid, I was waiting for him to realize he did not even realize his finger was up his nose. He was just so engrossed in the performance. It was great, one of my, one of my bigger successes. So yeah, connect with your audience, wear comfortable clothing, uh, be able to protect uh, your money if there's anything in there and you know, that kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, Walter did a great introduction on the nuts and bolts of the busking thing. So if you haven't seen that video, you need to see it. He was lovely. It was great. Oh yeah, I should have stopped the share, right? Thank you, husband. Uh, my husband, David C., handles all of the techie things because I don't know what I'm doing, as you probably have noticed. <clears throat> I really like these uh, tune play-alongs because really it's not like we get a chance to um, like really learn the tunes, but when you get a book and at least be able to kind of pick through some of them and by just playing through them, you get a sense of them. Like you said, you can answer the questions, get some ideas on some tips on playing the tunes, and then we have a chance to go back and uh, work on the tunes that we really like. So, so yeah, I like this kind of tune play-along. I know that Debbie does quite a few of these tune play-alongs, so if you're interested in those, you know, if you haven't been on her list already, you'll wanna jump in on some of her other tune book play-alongs. They're a lot of fun. They're, they're fun, because so often it's difficult to know whether a tune is gonna be worth it or not. Someone may recommend the tune or the style of music, but you have to be able to have some sort of a sense, is this worth, is this worth a second date? with this tune, or is, or is this like just it. a one-night stand? And that's okay. There's tons of one-night stands out there tune-wise, mm -hmm. and it's great. You'll still develop some facility and some you know, understanding of being aware of the other tunes that you wouldn't necessarily want to do again, but it's interesting. Yeah. Great. Any questions for Debbie? Amanda says thank you to We're everyone. Thank you. So. Oh, good, good. I would suggest too, and if you want to practice busking, practice with your plants. Except, of course, the plants can't move around the way your audience will. So you move around your plants and play to your plants. You know, aim a tune there and see, and they'll grow. They'll grow better. Mm. And your pets. Do it for your pets. Stuffed animals. Yeah. It's all good. Just pretend, because it's really all in your mind. And memorize whenever you can. Although there's going to be a segment of the population that will be so impressed that you know how to read music. <laughs> as well as a certain amount of the population will also say, oh, she should have been memorized it. It's... <laughs> so you can't win. Wonderful. Well, great. Well, thank you so much. Um, we will put this on uh, YouTube. So if you wanted to catch anything uh, later, you can certainly do that. And of course, you all have the, hopefully you all got the tune books uh, so that you can work on some of these tunes later. And if you haven't seen Walters, we'll have Walters. Well, Walters is also up on YouTube. Um, so on um, some tips on busking, he gave a lot of, like I said, a lot of good. Uh, so hopefully people have some courage to go on out there and try some public performing and, and uh, make a little money. What the heck? So.